Hi everyone, Casey here at the Assisted Living Training School, and in today's video we are going to be talking about service plans. What are service plans? Individualized service plans, also known as a care plan, is a detailed document that is personalized for each individual. It describes what services are needed and what care will be provided. Everyone in the care team contributes to the service plan. If you haven't already, please go back and watch the previous video on the care team. Before moving into a care home or facility, an assessment will be held with the care team to discuss the individual's interests, needs, and desires. This is to ensure that the resident is comfortable in the new setting and the quality care is provided. Beyond that, it is encouraged that this information is revisited and updated since needs and preferences change. What to keep in mind when creating a care plan. Here are some tips for individuals and residences who are entering into a new setting. When meeting with the care team, it's so important to be open about your choices, your preferences, and your interests. It's the best way to receive the best care. Categorize your needs. Categorize your needs based on this list. Physical health, mental health, behavioral health, and social health. By categorizing each of these needs and listing what you expect and what you would prefer, it is going to make your transition into a home or facility that much better. And lastly, set goals. Setting goals for yourself, whether that be to be more active, to talk to someone new, to make a new friend, just create goals for yourself while you're in the setting. Creating those goals allow you to see that there is progress happening. Here are a couple of tips for family members. Number one, support your loved one. In any sort of transition, it can't be easy, but it makes it that much easier if there is someone by your side supporting you. So be that person to support your loved one going into a care home or care facility. Number two, participate. Ask questions. During this meeting, it's so important that you are there, that you are participating, that you are also to be in contact with. And number three, along with number two, is to be readily available. If the caregiver has questions or the manager has questions, be available to answer those. Be a resource that they can use to provide your loved one the best care. And number four, do your own assessment to how the plan is working. You know better than anyone besides the resident what works and what doesn't. What makes the resident happy, what doesn't make the resident happy. The preferences, the choices. It's great to support your loved one by providing those things to the care staff. And tips for the home and facility staff. When creating a care plan, it's number one, so important that it is easy to read and understand. Make it in a way that it is accessible to the resident and the family members. Number two, outline the team's approach. Think of this as the mission statement of this care plan. What do you want to get out of this care plan for your resident? And get input of everyone involved. Number three, revisit the service plan often and ask questions like, does anything need to change? Are they satisfied? Are they getting what they need? By asking these questions, you're able to develop and optimize this service plan to meet your residents' needs. Now that we've talked about what to keep in mind when creating a service plan, let's talk about who needs to sign off on it. The resident needs to sign off on it. If the resident is unable to sign off on it, then a representative or POA, power of attorney. The manager or the manager designee, as well as the nurse or primary care physician. With these signatures, it ensures that this is in the best interest for the resident. Remember that the care for the resident is number one. Always ask yourself, how can I provide the best care? Thank you so much for watching today's video and see you in the next one.